from Hollywood, it's People Now with Bill Tutt. Now, here's Bill. Our guest today, Mary Wilson from The Supremes, pop star Bertie Higgins is with us, Lee Berger, who portrays Joseph on Dynasty, Justine Bateman from Family Ties. We're also going to take a look at the car of tomorrow. It's called The Vector. Well, after three years of playing Joseph the Major Domo on the hit series Dynasty, our first guest has decided to leave the Carrington household. Lee Berger is with us again. Had the pleasure of meeting Lee, well, I guess, uh, December or January when I first came out here. Yes, that was nice. Yeah. That day was nice. And you told Didn't us. I say something? I sat down, uh, and, and I think I may have demoralized you for a moment. I said something very facetious. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, there was a glaze that happened to you. You looked as though you wanted to get up and walk away well, and leave me there. And leave me there. If you had, you know, I would have taken over the program. <laughs> well, you're leaving your show. You're yeah. leaving Dynasty. Yeah. That's, I mean, you know, everybody wants to know why. Well, there's, there, there's, a, there, there, there's, there's really a mutuality about, about this. Um, yeah, I hadn't been too uh, content with where the role uh, was being developed and where it was going. Um, there was more that I wanted to do, and uh, that didn't seem to be in the plans or the pattern of the show. Uh, the role of Joseph, I think, was meant to be kept where he was. Um, it took me a few seasons to realize that. Uh, the cocoon mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, going down to the studio all the time and having it there is, is tempting. And, and, and reassuring. But there's a time, I think, when um, if you want to act and you feel you're not doing enough of it, there's a time, I think, when you just have to go. It's time to say yeah. goodbye. But I th as I, I say, there was a mutuality about this. I, I think they may have been planning for Joseph to leave anyway. Um, I, I had made my dissatisfaction about where the character was going uh, obvious to them. But our relationship was always uh, uh, excellent. And uh, I have nothing but gratitude yeah. for Aaron Spelling and Doug Kramer and, and Richard Nesta Shapiro for having uh, given me this uh, a platform, so to speak. Uh, and I'd always be grateful to them for that. But now it's time to go on and do some other things. Yeah, because as you said, you tried to mentioned about changing the character a little bit and just didn't work out there well yeah yeah there, you know i i had i had some ideas about where uh, the development of this character should go um it didn't seem to meet with that kind of general uh, uh, agreement and so on and uh, um i simply felt it's time it's time to go on and do something else is there any possibility that it is uh is joseph the guy that started the fire <laughs> you know, it's an know, easy out for them now. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, uh, they hadn't written uh, next season's um, script as yet, you know, when, when the fire was planned. So uh, I think they'll go where they feel it's, um, it's most appropriate. Although since I'm not coming back, it would seem to me now that I would be um, the perfect candidate to have done that. Uh, yeah. it, it would seem so. Did they do any of the... What they've done on, uh, I guess, what was the, uh, on the Dallas show a couple of years ago, where yeah. they, they filmed everybody, uh, yes. saying that they, they possibly would be the one. Did they do that with Dynasty? Well, as I understand, they had, they, they filmed the fire two or three different ways, depending on uh, what would happen with some people who might or might not come back, that they would have the kind of film that would be right for them, you see. Uh, uh, but that's that's kind of standard, and and it's uh, you have to protect yourself if you're not certain about what some actors may decide to do if they want too much money or if their demands are something that you can't meet. And I'm talking as a producer now. <laughs> then then it would seem appropriate that Always you would have make... a roll of film somewhere. Oh sure, oh, we can get surely. rid of you very quickly surely. over here. Yeah. A couple of years ago, as I mentioned on Dallas, when Jr. was shot, the bumper stickers, the T-shirts about who yes. shot Jr. Somebody got us this thing today. Yeah. I saw yeah. that. The burn, the burn, <laughs> Alexis burn. <laughs> Bumper sticker. That's very funny. I saw that today the first time. Is it really a bumper sticker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Alexis, of course, is what? Joan Collins. Yes. That's so funny. That's better than glow, little, glow, little, glow, worm, glimmer, glimmer, isn't burn, it? Things yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a nice, happy song. Burn, Alexis, burn. That's a little rough, you know? <laughs> didn't Dallas, they wrapped up their season the same way this year, didn't they? You know, it occurs to me, uh, burn, Alexis, burn, is that somebody's idea of being just facetious because of a fire? Or does it represent somebody's attitude about the character of Alexis? Which is it? Who knows? I mean, you guys got a lot, you have a lot of strange fans out there. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been getting some fan mail on ruled paper uh, lately. Oh. Uh, that's one thing. <laughs> In that's all right. You know, but, when, but when the writing falls out of the lines and goes down into other lines, you begin to, you begin to worry. <laughs> what do they write to the major domo? Uh, one, one little girl wh whose age seemed to be 10, I think, um, accused me of having fathered uh, the baby that Crystal uh, did not give birth to. She said, I know that you were the one. A girl of 10? Um, yes. She described herself as being 10. Um, and when she finished the letter, after a signature, she said, uh, P.S. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I dropped a little note and I said something about, I'd love to smile much more often, but unfortunately, Joseph doesn't seem to have very much to smile about. He doesn't smile. Yeah. We had Jeffrey Scott on here ah. uh, that told me the story after the show, the yes. thing you pulled on him one time when his parents were visiting the set. Yes, his parents I were... I don't know if you remember the whole story. Well, that. his parents were on the... You know, I'm always... He said you're quite a prankster. Yeah, I... I uh, unfortunately, uh, it seems I don't look as though I should play the prankster role, but there's clown in me. Um, his parents were there visiting that day, and he was going to do a scene with, uh, with uh, Linda. Um, it was a rather vital scene, too. And I wanted to do everything I possibly could to get him totally disconcerted. I thought it would be a marvelous challenge for him to overcome that. So uh, I had his parents, I, I told his parents to sit just outside of camera range where he couldn't help but see them as he worked. And he didn't know that was going to happen, so that when he sat down and began to work with her, there's <laughs> mom and papa, right? <laughs> he said he was like walking out, here he's doing the, this major <laughs> scene with uh, Linda Evans. And he's looking out there, and there's his mother and dad sitting there like they're at home watching TV. So it was the weirdest feeling, because he had to do the set, yeah. or the scene, a couple yeah. different times. Yeah. yeah. What do you got in the works now? When you just pack up and say, that's it, I'm leaving? Oh, no, no, no. You, you pack up, and you try not to look back. You, know? you try not to look back, because when you look back, uh, there are always possible feelings of, oh, well, uh, because the home was there for three years. And for actors, it's important. An actor, when an actor has a home, that cocoon can be uh, inviting. And when you leave it, uh, you miss it at first. Uh, something, something badly is out of joint. It simply isn't there anymore. So the trick is, if you've been around for some time, is to uh, steadfastly look the other way and think about what you're going to do next. And that's all I'm thinking about. So I'm going to do a play. I want to get back on the stage again. I'm going to do a play called, uh, I think it's going to be this play, uh, Three Goats in a Blanket. It was written by two very funny writers, Woody Kling and Bob Hilliard, and both of whom, incidentally, were writers on the uh, Hot Old Baltimore, a, oh, yeah. a comedy series that I did a few years ago. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's going to give me a chance to use some muscles, so to speak, acting muscles that I, uh, I couldn't use in Dynasty. <laughs> that is to be amusing. Uh, right. Um, and to... Um, and, and, and to play a man with a problem, since Joseph never had any problems, other than to see that the household was run. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to using a part of me that I haven't been able to use for three years. Will that, when you get the play in the works, will it be here? No, in LA? no. I'm going to do it in Edmonton and Calgary and Winnipeg. Oh. Uh, there are three marvelous theaters run up there by some people. And uh, we'll think about packaging it, possibly if the people like it. Would you want to get back into another TV series? Oh, surely. Oh, yeah, surely. The part were right. Yeah, 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 but this time in, in, a, in a role where um, I can at least portray somebody who has a problem of some kind. If you've got a problem of some kind as the character, I guess it's kind then of, you can work. You know, you can yeah. work. If you have no problem, you don't work. You're, you're a body somehow. Well, and it must be kind of tough, especially in Dynasty, when you've got all these people dealing with all these major things. If somebody's burning yes. somebody, somebody's <laughs> running around somebody, somebody's yes. got somebody else pregnant, and you come in yes. complaining about a couple busted dishes. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I've, I've got to admit, I... <laughs> I have to admit, I've, I've so, always been a little envious, all the crises that kept occurring on the show, and I wanted to be part of a crisis so that I could, uh, I could throw a glass into a fireplace just once, <laughs> or, or, uh, or even break down and cry <laughs> just <laughs> once, or it's laugh so, loudly, laugh yeah. loudly about something, you know, or even, my gosh, even open my tie once, once just or twice. Get, you know. Loose it up. Yeah. Did you... Uh, no, yeah, we got to help me on this now, because I just recently, when I moved out here, became, thanks to our producer, a Dynasty fan. Yes. I mean, I didn't know all the plots and who was who, but didn't you have a daughter on the show? Yes, I have a daughter on the show. Oh, she's got a lot so of So what happens now. to her? What happens to her? She just stays there? I don't really know. They may, 
they, they said something to me about uh, the fact that uh, they felt that Joseph would disappear without any explanation. But that's always good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tantalizing in a way because it can leave many doors open for something to happen with that character again. Sure. See. Um, you can come back with some problems. You can come back with some problems. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let me forget that, are you? <laughs> huh? Huh? Now, she's, she's pregnant now? She's pregnant now, yeah. Okay. She's pregnant now. But as I understand it, the last segment led us to understand that she, it isn't Jeff's baby. It isn't Jeff's baby. Uh, I so hope it isn't Blake Carrington's baby. That would be fun. Oh, that would now, be real shocker. There's an idea. Huh? <laughs> well, there's no end to the way you can twist these things yeah. around. We're going to take a little break, and we're going to be back with uh, Justine Bateman, who is from the TV show Family Ties. Lee, I hope you can stay. Yes, a pleasure, Bill. Okay, yes. stay with us. We'll be back.